In this video, I'm going to show you how to bring in video footage into Blender so that you can use the Grease Pencil tool to draw on top, otherwise known as rotoscoping. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is um, I've got my standard Grease Pencil animation setup, which is my 3D window. Down below that is my Dope Sheet editor, and down below that is my timeline. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my camera. So I'm going to right mouse click on my camera to select it. And then on the keyboard, I'm going to press Option R, which resets its rotation and makes the camera face uh, straight down. I'm going to press Option G. If you're on a Windows computer, that would be Alt R and Alt G. That puts my camera at the center of my world. I'm now going to rotate my camera by pressing R, X and then 90, type in 90 and left click. So now my camera is facing the positive Y axis and there we are. And I'm just gonna move the camera back. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm going to go to Add Mesh and I'm gonna choose Images as Planes. If you don't see the Images as Planes option, it means that you didn't install the add-on. So you can come up here quickly to File user preferences, click on add-ons, and you're going to search in the top left corner for the word images. You're going to find import images as planes and you'll check to install it. And then you need to choose save user settings to make sure it stays. Okay, so now shift A, I'm going to choose images as planes. So I'm gonna look on my desktop. It could also be in your downloads folder and I'm gonna find my video. Um, okay, so it's this, it's this one right here. Um, and then you have to decide before you double click on it or before you say import, you have to decide, do you want Blender's lights to affect the image plane? That means you'll, you'll have to, you'll get some darks, you'll get some light parts. Um, and so you'll have, to, you'll, you'll have to deal with a little bit more. In this scenario, I want it to be evenly lit um, and just be nice and bright. So I'm going to select the video and I'm going to come down here in the bottom left hand corner and right here where it says material settings I'm going to change it from diffuse to shadeless and that way it won't get um, affected by Blender's uh, lighting setup. I'll now go ahead and choose import and now it comes into my scene. Okay so if I look through my camera view by pressing numpad 0 um, I can do a couple of things. I could move the camera forward, I could move the image plane closer to the camera, or I could scale up the image plane and make it bigger. All three of those options will, um, will do it. So I could select my camera and move the camera forward. And you'll see in camera view now it looks bigger. So I can move the camera forward some more. So that's really easy. Something like that. Now I can't see, and you can see how close it is right now, um, I can't see the actual video on the image plane. So the way to do that is you're going to come down here in the bottom of the 3D editor and you're going to see this little pop-up that is called viewport shading. And we want to change it from solid to material. So when you do that, now you see the uh, you see the dance video. And I can come down here in the dope sheet editor and I can scrub along the, the editor here and I can see the video. Okay, so now I need to set up my timeline so that it matches the frames of the video. So right now my timeline has 250 frames uh, and I need to figure out how many frames are in this video. Well, one way to do that is to open up another window here in Blender. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to the top right hand corner. Uh, notice it's not this one up here on the very top right hand corner, it's this one just below it, okay? Um, and I'm going to put my mouse pointer on those three diagonal lines. I'm going to left click and drag to the left and that's going to create an exact copy of this window on the left. I want to now change this window on the right here and I'm going to change it to what's called a properties window. So I'm going to come down here in the bottom left hand corner, click on this little pop-up menu and I'm going to find where it says properties. Okay, so now normally in Blender when you start with the default blender, you'll see the properties uh, window, and it looks something along the lines of this. 
I'm going to temporarily close my um, toolbar over here by pressing N, just so it's a little bit less for you to look at. Okay, so here's what we need to do. So the first thing we need to do is we need to select by right-clicking our image plane that has our video. Then we're going to come up here and we're going to look for this red and white checkerboard icon here. This is called the texture panel. I'm going to scroll down and you'll see a preview of the texture. Keep scrolling down, it'll tell you the name of the video that's playing, it'll tell you where the video is stored, where it's located, and right down here you'll see um, it'll say frames and it'll tell you currently you're on frame one uh, of 453. Um, so we have 453 frames. So what we want to do is now we want to come down here to our timeline and we want our start frame always at one and we want our end frame. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to type in 453 and you have to press return. Um, so now our timeline um, and I can zoom out of my timeline with my scroll wheel. Now you can see the length of our timeline and it matches up exactly for the video. So as I scrub along in the timeline, you can see it down here, and there's the video. Okay, so um, now that I've got that, now I can go ahead and I can um, start doing some grease pencil. So I'm going to make this window over here not as great. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't really need to see it, so I'm going to just join those together. I'm going to press the letter N um, to get my grease pencil tool set up. Um, I'm going to deselect the image plane by pressing A. On my left hand toolbar, I'm going to make sure I'm on the grease pencil tab. There we are. And then over here on the right, I want to make sure that I can see the grease pencil layers tool. Okay, so now if I were to get ready to start animating, I can zoom in with my scroll wheel. I can pan by holding down shift and doing the mouse wheel. And if I wanted to, uh, I'm on frame one. And I'm not going to animate this whole thing because I don't want this video to last forever. But I would come over here now and I'm checking on my tools on the left hand side. And the mo probably the most important thing right now is that for the stroke placement, I want that set up as cursor. That's really important. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press, um, I'm going to press and hold the letter D for draw. And I'm going to go ahead and draw my first stroke. I now get to see all the controls and settings over here for the grease pencil and I now have a grease pencil layer and onion skinning and colors and all that kind of good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and press D and right mouse button and erase. Okay, so I'm going to choose the brush that I want which is going to be the ink brush. I'll change the stroke color and make it something a little brighter, maybe a turquoise and mine is not going to have any fill and I'm going to Increase the opacity on the stroke. Okay, so now I can go ahead and I can double click and I can change the name of this grease pencil layer. And so maybe I'll call this uh, male dancer. And there we go. So maybe I'll have one layer just for the male dancer and one layer for the female dancer. Maybe a third layer for effects going on in the background. And there you are. So for animation, and I'm just going to do a few frames here, I could go ahead and draw some accent lines around the male dancer and something like that. Okay, so that was frame one. Now if I want to go to frame two real quickly, I could just use the left and right arrow keys. So if I do the right arrow key, you'll see now that um, I'm on the next frame. You'll see the frame has updated, it's changed. So now what I want to do is I want to start drawing again. So I'm going to press D. And I'm going to go ahead and draw. Last little, two little bits of advice I can give you is this might be a good reason for you to turn on continuous drawing up here on the left hand side to make the process go faster. So you can then decide to turn on onion skinning or not. I think onion skinning can be good because you can see right here I'll try to make it a little brighter. So you can see how far your rotoscope lines are moving uh, and judge whether they're moving too much or too little and things like that. Of course, you can turn on and off. So now I can just go to, uh, and I'll zoom in here in my dope sheet, and I'm just using the scroll wheel 
and then panning down here with my mouse wheel. Okay, so there you can see my two frames. So I would just use right mouse, right arrow key to get to frame three, uh, and then I would start drawing. You can see his arm is moving away from the camera. And now all I have to do is, since I have continuous drawing turned on, it's just right arrow key and then continue drawing. Right arrow key, continuous drawing, right arrow key, and you get the idea. Um, the process goes pretty quickly. Again, I'm not doing very much in terms of rotoscoping here, but you can see how fast it is going. And of course, you should zoom out with your mouse wheel every once in a while, pan, um, and then watch your watch it so that you can go ahead and you can see it here. Um, if you would like to hide your uh, image plane, the one that's playing a video, um, so you can see what's going on, um, you can go ahead and do that. And I'll show you what you can do. Uh, you can right mouse click on the video and you can simply press H to hide it. So H to hide. So now you can see in the camera view, I can go ahead and I can see this all by itself, which is really cool. And then to unhide anything that you've hidden, you can press Option H and it will come back. So again, to hide something, right mouse click it to select it, press H. Anything that is selected and you press H will be hidden. Option H to bring it on back. Okay, make sure you save your projects along the way and good luck.